guests. I'm joined by Priyali Sir. She's a filmmaker and women's rights activist. Thank you for joining us. So we obviously have seen that the Epstein case is highlighting a lot of preconceived notions people have about what they think sex trafficking is sex trafficking is, where it happens, and how it's defined. What's the reality? Uh, it's not a new issue. It's been an age-old issue. It's very unfortunate that cases like this uh, happen, but it also pushes us to have a discussion around it. It pushes us to raise these issues and have a discussion around it. As you said in the numbers, um, it, it's true that the, the number of trafficked uh, women especially are are huge. There are about 40 million people who are trafficked, of which 60% 60, uh, 60 is, I think, women and children, which is a massive number, and of which almost two-thirds of the population is sex trafficking. Why is this happening is obviously people who are most vulnerable get targeted uh, at various locations, get targeted at various points. Uh, and the most vulnerable could be uh, people who are displaced, people who come from extremely poor socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, what has been seen mostly is that when a sudden change in economic status due to, uh, due to uh, you know, it could be a natural uh, impact, it could be a forced migration, it could be a, it's because of those issues when a, a when a sudden change in economic status happens, that people fall vulnerable to such traffickers. So you've talked about some of the ways that, that people end up in the situation. How is it that they go undetected for so long? A lot of these are very underground operations that people are running. It's a very well-oiled network. Um, I have spoken to trafficking victims um, recently. In fact, two months ago, I spoke to three women from Eritrea who were trafficked, uh, they were actually migrant women or refugee women trying to make their way out of Eritrea into countries where they could get safety and security. But during that journey, during that process, they get trafficked. And once you get trafficked, you're constantly into the system of being exploited further and further. Uh, our current policies worldwide in terms of immigration and um, migration is no good in terms of protecting the survivors and protecting the victims. It actually puts the pressure more on the victims and the fear of potential deportation or the fear of not being allowed into a country make them stay um, enslaved to the traffickers. And obviously we've seen that this is something that, as you mentioned, has been going on for a long time. And you have the Epstein case, the R. Kelly case, these clearly men of, of more, more wealth and means than the average person. But still, it took a lot to get to this point in terms of a prosecution. Why is it so difficult to prosecute these types of cases? Rochelle, you couldn't be pointing to the problem uh, more accurately. The number of cases that get prosecuted and the number of cases that get convicted are abysmally low. Um, it probably has something to do with the way the criminal justice system works. It probably has a, it probably has something to do with how much of the pressure or the burden to prove that the person was trafficked is on the survivor, which includes testifying against the trafficker, which is extremely uncomfortable and causes a feeling of insecurity to the tra a trafficked person. So I, I think the way we create our system, especially the way our law enforcement and criminal justice system is created, is not in favor of the traffic survivor. So for some of these, these predators, how, how lucrative is this, is this, I can't even call it an industry, how, in, how lucrative is this practice? So the last I checked, um, and I think the figures are from 2014, which probably have been uh, massively increased in another five years. It said that the whole business of, the global business of trafficking annually is $150 billion, which is massive, of which uh, just sex trafficking is $99 billion, which is two-thirds of the portion. Uh, just to give a sense of what this means individually, um, perhaps uh, by some interviews that have been recorded by trafficked uh, survivors and women, it comes across that per woman that is sexually trafficked means about a hundred thousand U.S. dollars to a trafficker from that one woman per year. 
Wow. So that's a massive amount of money. No wonder this just keeps on going. It is a well-oiled network. People get paid down the line, down mm -hmm. the chain, and that's how it progresses. And this is something we see not just nationally, we see it internationally as well. Where are global regulators on this? How are they working together and providing any sort of resources to really attack this issue? Yeah, so, so trafficking doesn't only happen domestically, correctly. It, a lot of trafficking is global. It is international, foreign nationals. Uh, there is a global uh, UN protocol, which is a UN Palermo protocol, which is ratified by many countries. And that protocol actually requires countries that, have, uh, that are signatories to it to not only bring in, bring in legislation which prevents trafficking from happening, but also immediately prosecutes and moves ahead with cases uh, to resolve them when they are reported. But unfortunately, we don't see the implementation of these. So the problem is not with the legislation or the right making of the legislation, but the problem is always with the implementation of the legislations. All right, thank you so much.